and good morning. I'm pretty sure my talk will fit nicely with the theme of fusion. I'm going to literally use the word fusion when I describe fusion energy for you. Fusion is the coming together of things. What's coming together in fusion energy? Hydrogen nuclei. If they come together and touch, they fuse to form helium, neutron, and they yield energy. Fusion energy has, for decades, been the holy grail of sustainable energy, with hydrogen as a fuel, which can be extracted economically from water. The world's oceans represent millions, if not billions, of years of fuel. There's no CO2 emitted. If it may, I'm going to argue in this talk that fusion energy is closer to a reality than many of you might think. When it comes, and I believe it is coming, it'll transform the world. We'll have uh, an abundant, clean, safe source of fuel, essentially forever. Might sound too good, so I need to offer proof. What proof do I have that this fusion thing works? Just look to the heavens. The sun and all the stars in the universe use this process, have done so for billions of years. It's a marvelous process. The sun makes it look easy, it's a little harder down here on Earth. Why is it hard? Well, the hydrogen nuclei are both positively charged. Like charges repel, so they're going to repel as we try to bring them together and fuse them. We're going to have to arrange to give them a running start at each other. We're going to have to put energy into the system up front to convince them to touch. How much energy? Well, temperature is... Uh, a measure of average energy, and the temperatures we'll need exceed 100 million degrees C. It's very toasty. So let's be doubly clear. I'm not talking about cold fusion. This is the real thing. At 100 million degrees, no solid material can exist. All matter takes the form of a highly ionized, hot, hot gas that we call a plasma. So if we want a power plant here on Earth, we're going to have to arrange to make a plasma, hold on to its energy, and get more fusion energy out than we put in, all without touching it. How is that possible? It is going to be hard, but it is possible. One of the more direct approaches for fusion research is called laser fusion. It's very direct. You take a, a pellet of solid hydrogen fuel, as shown on the right, and bombard it from all sides with high-intensity lasers. This energy compresses the fuel creates a hot, hot, dense plasma, and you do get an intense burst of fusion energy. However, nothing about this target encourages the plasma to hang on to the energy that we gave it. And very quickly, in a billionth of a second, the plasma cools off and the fusion stops. And as yet, no one has been able to get more energy out than the energy we put in. So you can't make a power plant with this yet. If only we had some invisible force field that could help hold on to high energy ions. Oh, if we only had it. Well, if you look to the heavens, there's actually a clue. This is the northern lights, which happen when high energy ions from the solar wind are directed to our poles by the Earth's magnetic field. Magnetic fields guide the motions of high energy ions. So not only is this a beautiful show, it's a very important hint as to how we can do better. This is using magnetic fields as the basis of the other main thrust for magnetic, uh, or for fusion energy, magnetized fusion. I worked in this area at MIT on a device of this geometry. Around, uh, around this structure, we arrange electromagnets and arranged to make a magnetic field shown in red that forms closed lines in a donut shape. And along those lines, the ions and electrons of the plasma travel without touching the walls that you've put around it. This type of device is called a tokamak. Many of them have been built over the decades. And this is a cross-sectional view inside one of the larger ones, where we're inside that donut-shaped chamber. And on the right, you see the glow from a plasma that was created along the magnetic field inside. 
Despite excellent research, this type of device has also failed, as yet, to produce more energy through fusion than you have to put in to create the plasma. So we should just forget the whole thing, right? Fusion is a non-starter. I don't think so. And in fact, I'm going to show you that we're actually closer to making it a reality than, than you might think. Plotted here is a curve showing the progress in fusion performance over time since the 1970s, plotted in red dots. Plotted alongside in blue dots is the increase in computer technology over the same time, which we all know has increased by leaps and bounds. We're 10,000 times better with fusion energy now than we were in the 1970s. The keen observer might notice that the red dots stop around the year 2000, whereas the blue dots continue on up. The gray zone that I show at the top is the region we have to achieve with fusion to begin to make a power plant. That's where you begin to break even and get more energy back than you put in. Why don't we have a red dot? Well, in fact, in, to, in that good zone, basically, to progress along, the basic answer is money, economics. To make progress along either of these curves takes money to get to the next stage. And unlike the blue dots, computer technology, Fusion doesn't have a product yet, not until we enter that gray zone. The blue dots, even in the 1970s, with these diminished computer capabilities, had a consumer market. I personally helped fund the progress in computers. I spent real money as a boy on this computer game, if you can believe it. So you know that computer games have improved from that point, and this curve shows that Fusion has made similar progress. The next step, the next device which will enter this gray zone for Fusion, could have been built in the year 2000 or so, but economic will uh, failed. At this time, in 1997, oil and gas was at an all-time low price, and it was just too convenient to, for the international community to pony up the billions of dollars to make the next device. I can show you that device. It's a tokamak. It's this magnetized plasma, plasma device. You see the donut shape there in the middle uh, with high uh, technology superconducting magnets in red and the, the glowing plasma in the middle. For scale, I'll show you the little person in the bottom right there. This is an enormous device. It'll cost billions of dollars to make. And although it could have been built to continue on this red um, progression, it was decided, no, we're going to put things off. Um, finally, in 2006, by the way, uh, it was decided that we, they would build this. Uh, uh, and that's 17 years after I first heard about it as a student. And unfortunately, we'll have to wait another 20 years to get its results. I look forward to those results, but I guess we'll just have to sit around and patiently wait. Just on a side note, um, while waiting, I, with the uncertain future of fusion, I actually jumped from the red dots to the blue dots. I got a job in the computer industry for 15 years. However, one person in BC wasn't patient enough to wait. He said no. Surely there's some better way to make progress with uh, more affordable technology. He's now my boss. His name is Michel Lebert. He gives a very good TED Talk that you can look up later. It's a great story how he started his company. But what did he see in 2002, before ITER was uh, finally going to be built? What he saw was an enormous gap between the two major thrusts in uh, international fusion research. Over a, billion, over a million, million times difference in density and the time scale over which these fusion reactions occur. Laser fusion, very fast and pulsed. Magnetized fusion can last for, for many minutes, even hours. There's a big gulf between these extremes. Perhaps there's a sweet spot that allows more economical technology. Either extreme uses very delicate, very sophisticated and expensive technology. He looked in the research, and in this gulf, in the middle, if you will, he found a fusion between these two fusion concepts. The idea 
was conceived of in the 1970s. It's called magnetized target fusion. And Michel found a way to use modern technology to really advance this concept. It, it, it takes the best of both worlds, in my opinion. Like laser fusion, the plasma reaches the final state of high temperature and density through a compression pulse. But the target that gets compressed benefits from a magnetic field, so it can hold on to the energy for much longer during that compression. How does it work? It's, it's not easy, but here is the general fusion approach. At the center, there is a, a sphere of metal into which molten, uh, molten metal is pumped round and round to open a vertical vortex up the middle. A magnetized plasma at medium temperature and medium density is injected from the top to the bottom. Here it is being injected into the hollow vortex in the middle. Simultaneously, steam-driven pistons have uh, accelerated and struck anvils at the outside of the sphere, driving a pressure wave towards the center of the sphere. The pressure wave grows in strength as it travels towards the center and collapses this vortex around the magnetized target and compresses it to very high, very, uh, very high density and temperature, achieving a, a burst of fusion, shown in the bright red dots there. The fusion energy comes out in the form of high energy neutrons, and these are slowed down by the liquid metal that created the pulse of fusion to begin with. This is a very attractive uh, feature of this approach because it almost uniquely handles the flux of these high energy neutrons that can be very damaging to the high technologies of lasers and superconducting magnets and the other approaches. The liquid metal that absorbed the energy from the fusion is now hotter and is pumped out or it's pumped to a heat exchanger to make steam which makes electricity in a turbine in the more conventional way. And then the metal is pumped back in at the equator to spin the vortex back up again and continue the process. The company started in 2002 with just two people. Today, it's 65 of us. I'm happy to say I joined five years ago and I'm doing fusion research again. Now we have our work cut out for us. We have to demonstrate each of these technologies here is a, a full-scale model of the plasma injector that we'll need to inject the, the target. Here's a half-scale version of the metal sphere into which we have pumped liquid lead lithium, opened the vortex, and around that is uh, 14 full-scale pistons that drive the pressure wave and can collapse this vortex. Uh, successful engineering demonstrations of the major components of what we'll need to make a power plant. I hope I've ar argued that fusion energy is a lot closer to a reality than some of you might think. And to get there, it's going to take at least as much economic will as good science. Fusion is coming, and when it does, it's going to transform the world. It could be the big international collaboration that get there, could be General Fusion, could be a number of other small companies that have formed in the space because we've all realized that the alternative of using fossil fuels is not an alternative at all. Fusion is coming and it's going to transform the world. When it comes, we'll have clean energy everywhere forever. Thank you very much.